Hello everyone. I wanted to make a video on this topic and I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while. This video is on the topic of YouTube in general, where it has been, and where I think this platform will be going. I want to start off with a brief history of my personal experience with this website. I started watching YouTube videos in the fall of 2006. I remember watching videos from Corey Williams, also known as Mr. Safety, B. Scott, Natalie Tran, who is also named Community Channel, Boogie2988, Hot for Words, Lisa Nova, Ray William Johnson, Olga K, and a variety of different other YouTubers. They've done either quality reaction videos, comedy skits, and they made me very happy for a while. I also have another channel which I just uploaded a uh, video content that I liked. In 2011, I uploaded a video called Granny Segway Fail, which I ended up selling for a very small amount of money. I also uploaded, but not monetizing, a video where Kathy Griffin met Michelle Bachman just for the purpose of embedding that video in my personal political blog. That video ended up going viral and ended up being posted on Crooks and Liars and other blogs and websites. Now all I see on the YouTube recommendation feed is just worthless content from either ridiculous prank videos, for example, lady has diarrhea in a toilet gone sexual, um, softcore pornography and so-called reaction channels where they just freeboot content and don't really react to the videos. Now, I'm not going to point out these specific channels because not only I don't want a, a community strike on my channel, but we already know who those content creators really are. In addition, uh, content creators like Grade A Under A, Boogie2988, and H3H3 have already pointed out these freebooters and stupid prank channels and my video will probably be just preaching to the choir at this point. However, I need to air out my opinions on the current state of and the possible future state of YouTube. Google as a company is the only technological company that does not have a customer facing technical support team. So for example, if you have an issue with your Google Android phone, you either go to your cellular provider for support or you go to a Google FAQ page. If you have an issue with Gmail, you go to the Gmail FAQ page. As well, if you have an issue with YouTube, well, what do you know? There's a YouTube FAQ page. There is no 1-800 number to call Google for any of their products across the board. I do know, per a comment from 3 Joe on Eli the Computer Guy's video, that YouTube will provide a personal manager, but you have to have at least 15,000 watch time hours per quarter or 90 days, just to get this type of treatment. My question at this point is, what about the smaller YouTubes like myself, who are just trying to start uh, to post video vlogs or any type of creative content? I do work at Apple as an Apple Care Advisor, so I do have a little bit of a biased opinion. But Apple does have one of the best support lines. It's been rated the highest in customer satisfaction by Consumer Reports every single year that the department has been established, and that's a very long time. My fear is that if Apple or some other technological company that has better customer support and if they create a video sharing site that has, again, has better support for content creators, it will be catastrophic to YouTube. I highly think that many of the content creators would end up jumping ship to this new platform and leave YouTube in the dust. Now, I think that YouTube has been a great company and it's given me wonderful opportunity to share my own views and uh, it's been a great great platform so I can post my uh, video game adventures. But the powers at Google and at YouTube have a lot to work on with its terrible IT system. Just as an example, after I upload a Castlevania Let's Play video, I get four 
content ID claims on my own video based on the soundtrack playing in the background. I would have to remove the background song or have the risk of YouTube not monetizing my video. Also, as another example, if I upload a Skyrim video, in the past I would have a content ID claim on Oblivion, and Oblivion is not Skyrim. But uh, those content ID claims have been removed. But now, here's my question to YouTube. If you have a content ID system that is automated and catches videos with audio from major recording companies and Hollywood production studios, why is this content ID system not at work for any of the YouTube content creators? So for example, if uh, H3H3 uploads a video and if one of these fake reaction channels uh, uploads re-uploads the video, why is the content ID system not working for H3H3? That's something that I don't understand at this point. And my other question is, where is the fair use? Thank you for watching my video, everyone, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.